What's up guys? I hope you're doing good. I am nearing my hometown right now as we speak. I am here with my dad. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> and we are going to take you on a little tour of the town that I spent most of my childhood in, which is called Kinistino. And I don't know exactly what the population is now, but when we were living there, it was around 800 people, which is definitely not a lot. And uh, my graduating class, I think, was like 19 people, something like that. K through 12 was all basically in the same building. And while of course there's many other opportunities that come with living in a big city, I actually really enjoyed going to school there and having such a close-knit community for that period of my life, obviously. I don't think it's the place for me to be living now, but I am just excited to go back and share with you guys what it was like living in a small town. Got dryers in these other bins. They load them grain cars, producer cars. Yeah. So they have these that's separate from the elevator. Here is the co-op, local gas station. And here we are, coming down the main strip to the downtown core. <laughs> As you can see, the traffic is just bustling. So here we are, Canistino, born and raised, right? How many years did you spend here? Too many. <laughs> yeah, too many. <laughs> 65 years here. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna use my selfie stick as a pointing tool. So as you guys can see here, there's nothing here anymore, but it used to be the main store that we used to go to is called Wallander's, and we'd rent movies from there, we'd get snacks from there, and it was actually a pretty decent place because we only have two grocery stores. Oh, and here we have Knistino Avenue. <laughs> we have another co-op food center. It actually feels really different being here right now. <laughs> yeah, when you haven't been here for quite a while. Yeah. Car wash. Yeah, we got the car wash. And then over here, we have the library. Very small, but nice to have one where you can take out stuff for free. The Half Century Club. What did people do in there? Play cards, park the pool, have suppers. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever do any of that kind of stuff? No. <laughs> Too cool. That's too cool for Canis to know. That's for old people. Yeah, and you're not old at all. No. No. So then over here is a classic that I never really went to or you went to. This is Ken's restaurant. Kind of a Chinese restaurant, but more or less American Chinese. Further on up here we got the post office. This is nice. They just they must have just built this, right? there for quite a few years. Oh, the garden, really? Yep. I haven't really seen it. Yep. What would you say the average house cost is in Canistino or like was when we were living here? Like $60,000, $70,000? Maybe. They, yeah. they range quite a bit. The yeah. new ones would cost, cost quite a, a bit lot more, more, but the yeah. older, smaller ones, I, not so much. I remember there was one house because I think it was Mary Clifford's house. You know, after she passed away and, you know, they just kind of had to sell off her stuff. I think that house went for auction and if I heard correctly, it sold for like $10,000. Oh, 10 or 12,000. Like yeah. That's a right. house. Yeah. You know, even though it's not a big house, but still like $10,000. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Oh my gosh, you know what we're gonna do? <laughs> you and me are gonna go on the playground. That's what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're just coming up to the school, so. Maybe I can relive some of my childhood memories. They're still in school right now, so before the bell rings at 3 o'clock, maybe we can get in there. Yeah, this was my kingdom. This is where all the magic happened. We spent K through 6 playing on this playground. It's pretty nice because, you know, in city schools, it's like, you know, it could just basically be that area right there, but we had this whole area to play in and it was actually pretty nice. Got to play tag, got to play soccer, had basketball courts. 
And the teachers basically let us do whatever we wanted to do, so that was pretty fun. But either the uh, equipment got smaller or I got bigger. I don't know which one. This used to be our shelter and whenever we were playing lava cake you couldn't touch the ground so you'd have to like climb up here somehow. Attempt at Alina trying monkey bars. Oh, it hurts. It really hurts. Let me you try. try. Sure. All right, you try it. Okay. Oh, your feet are on the ground. You're cheating. Yeah. Yeah, hard. It is hard, isn't it? You think it'll yeah. be easy. Okay, I know what I want to do. These things, I hope I don't hurt myself. These things were my favorite and I used to do like backflips on these big bars. Let's see if I can still do it. A little scared. I'm just nervous. Still got it. <laughs> I can upgrade to the big kid one. Which one? This one. Higher up. A little bit. Well, that's what I did for fun. And then over here, the big blue building, that was the rink, right? So, a lot of times we would like go to hockey games there. My favorite thing ever was to get like poutine and hot chocolate in the winter. That was lots of fun. Hi, the sky. And then what you do if you get high enough, you gotta try and jump off, but I'm a little scared. What did you do for recess when you were a kid, Dad? Played baseball or soccer. Yeah? Well, we gotta go on the hill. Because that hill, when I was a kid, seemed like the biggest hill in the world. And we used to, in the winter time, we used to roll down it. And we felt like we were really rolling for a really long time. Yeah. But now that I'm a bit bigger, it ain't that big of a hill. Here's the hill that I thought was so overwhelmingly large when I was a child. I can just take two and a half large steps and be at the top. Let's see. One, two, oh, no, three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Look at the view. My dad just found one of his friends to talk to, so it's just me and you guys for now. It is really interesting being back, and I haven't been here in the summer in a really long time, so it does just bring back a lot of memories. And uh, I guess the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that, uh, as you guys will see when we get there, my childhood home that you know we lived in for most of the time um, just this February had actually completely burned down and it was totally unexpected. Thankfully the people that had bought it from us um, nobody was hurt and they were able to get out in time. I haven't seen it yet but I guess the whole thing just like totally burned to a crisp and there was absolutely nothing left so I don't know how that's gonna feel to actually see all of that gone. And I guess I obviously assumed that even though it wasn't our house, I'd always be able to drive back and you know see it and remember the memories, but now that it's gone, I guess, you know, it's gone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know how I'll feel when I finally see it. Here's the Legion Hall. 
we had some memories here. We came to play bingo here, at least I did. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had did, a real I time. <laughs> you I had a fun time you playing with the senior citizens, yeah. playing for $20 bingo. Yeah, and over here is the museum. It's huge, as you guys can see. <laughs> but yeah, usually that was like a summertime job for the grade 12 students. And some of them said that it was haunted. Are you a pioneer, Dad? No, I'm not. No? I think you're a pioneer. No, I'm not a pioneer. You're uh, living life differently than most 70 year olds, so you're a pioneer in that. All right, so here we are coming up to where our house was. And it was great because we were kind of like in the town, but at the same time you had this piece of land that you farmed as well as stuff outside of town. And now, there's nothing left. Wow. No. And this was where our house was. So, what do you think that they did with the basement? Like, they just filled all this up? No, they dug all the cement up, probably. What do you mean? They took all the basement out. Oh. Because it was this high. Oh. So they dug it all up and then they filled it in with dirt. So it's not a hazard, no yeah. small kid will fall in. Yeah. They kind of got to clean it up. Did you build this shed? I built that shed. All grown up. Yeah, you had the. Wow, it is so grown in. Holy cow. This used to be all a garden in there. None of this was here. And I had the horses back. Yeah. Where did we used to have the chickens? They were like in there, right? Yeah, that building still pushed down. That pushed it down. Oh, really? Brett's cat, the barn was just back there by that big tree. Mm -hmm. I just pushed everything into the pile and put it down in the corner. But you got to have the wind in the right way. That's the old house. Oh yeah, let's talk about this. That's the house I'm at the farm. I brought it into the farm. So this is the house that yeah, you I actually grew up grew in. Up in. Yeah. Kid. Yeah, I've actually remember. Well, do you think we can walk in there? Oh god. I think we can. You might, be... fall, you might fall through the floor. Well, let's hope not. No. Alright. Oh, yeah. Everything's... Not everything. Yeah. So which room was this? This was the kitchen, obviously, the I guess. Kitchen. That was the That's kitchen. The cupboard. Yeah. The stove, the wood stove, cook stove was there. Yeah. Chimney there. Yeah. So that was... Oh. This, this bedroom here. Oh, there's a bedroom in yeah, here. Yeah, this was mom's and dad's. Oh, really? Yeah, see how small? Oh my gosh. Yeah. How did you... <laughs> they definitely didn't have a queen-size bed in here. <laughs> yeah. In the living room here. This was the living room. And this was the other bedroom. You guys had one other bedroom? Yeah. For all you kids? You guys had three kids. Well, Beth and Dean slept in here, and I had a little bed in my parents' room. Oh, okay, because you were still so small, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this was the other bedroom. Little yeah. closet. And people nowadays, they think they were sort of hard done by, and we thought it was just fine. <laughs> it looks terrible now because it's well, of course. all falling apart. But it was all nice in the day. Feels like it was a very long time yeah, ago long that we lived here. Ago. 
because I moved to Saskatoon basically when I was 19. I mean, I came back here to visit you quite a bit. So it's been about eight years since I lived here and about what, maybe five years since you lived here? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. It's just so weird to, because it's like I can kind of remember what it looked like, you know, in my mind. Yeah, you see the grad, the grad would have come over. Kind of like right over here would have been the garage Maybe. and you built a whole cement yeah, like here in the floor. Cement up. And then over here, how many bedrooms was it? It was three. three bedrooms upstairs and then we had a whole basement. It was a fairly large house. I think it was what, 1200? 1384. 13, 13. Yeah. Beautiful lilac trees. No, I don't know what you call Alright, so we are about to head out. And I guess this is a bit of a goodbye to the house that was ours for many years. Hopefully somebody builds something on it that makes them happy. Had many great memories for us. Yeah, well I remember when you planted these trees they were like yeah. yee high and now 20 years later that's how big they are. This house I will always remember because before we had a trampoline we would always come over to uh, my friend's place that lived here and jump on their trampoline. <laughs> Even when my friend wasn't home we'd just be like, can we jump on your trampoline? Yeah. Yeah, this was one of my favorite playgrounds and I would just go down that trail and through the trees to the school. Yeah. That was what I did every single day. This is Canistano Water Tower. There it is. Alright, well, we didn't hit every street but I feel that kind of concludes our city tour. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was the tour of Canistano, the town that I grew up in and had very many memories in and it's interesting because like we said before it does feel like it was a long time ago that we lived there and a lot of things have happened and changed since then so it was interesting to go back and the overwhelming feeling that I kept having was feeling very big <laughs> compared to how I used to feel when I was there but I guess when you're a kid everything seems bigger than it actually is so I am really glad at the end of the day that I had the experience of growing up there of having so much space to run around kind of being out in nature being in such a close-knit community it was a really great experience to have for that time of my life but at the same time, obviously, I'm very glad that I chose to move out of it, that I'm now in Toronto and basically a citizen of the world. So I guess everything has its time and place. And I am really glad that I had it. That I am really glad that I had that experience. I hope you guys enjoyed that insight into what life is like growing up in such a small agricultural community in central Saskatchewan. And I'm sure there will be many more adventures to come while I'm here on my trip. And yeah, until I see you guys next time, I hope you're having an absolutely amazing day. Keep being your own kind of beautiful and I will see you soon. Bye guys.